Tonight with our continuing coverage of the now shrinking homeless camp of I-90 known as Camp Hope. Tonight, Washdot saying the camp has shrunk by an estimated 14 people from one month ago. According to Washdot, there is now an estimated 124 people living at the camp compared to 138 last month and down significantly from the 600 plus who lived there over the summer. There are also fewer tents, RVs and vehicles at the camp. Washdot says the fencing around the camp that will be shrinking in the next week on the southern end of the fence along 2nd Avenue. This update comes as Spokane City leaders held a press conference about the shrinking camp and how the right of way initiative plan helped in these efforts. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley was at that press conference today. She is joining us live in the studio tonight with what else officials had to say. Amanda. Well, last summer, the city of Spokane submitted a plan to the state on how it would get people out of the homeless encampment and into housing. While city leaders admit the execution of that plan wasn't perfect, today they applauded the significant progress seen already at that encampment. Since the formation of this homeless encampment on Washdot property, stakeholders, including the city of Spokane, Jules Helping Hands, and state agencies, have remained split on how to help the people living here and clear it out. But over the last week, lawsuits against each other have been dropped. And now it seems these stakeholders are starting to come to an understanding. We just wanted to come and acknowledge that we have really moved into a new phase of um, changing the encampment and the right of way here. Under the state's right of way initiative, the city of Spokane secured $25 million to work with community partners to move people off the encampment and into housing. This morning, Council President Brian Beggs acknowledged Jules Helping Hands, Empire Health, CHAZ, and several other groups for their role in the progress already seen here. All these groups have come together in a coordinated fashion, and that is what was new about this initiative. And so we've made it pretty far, uh, but we still have at least 124 people to go. And I'm just... Uh, focused on encouraging people to follow the plan that we have. The city's acknowledgement came as somewhat of a surprise to founder of Jules Helping Hands, Julie Garcia. I am hopeful that everything that was said here will continue on into the future because we're going to need these folks to come up with these solutions. Looking to the immediate future, WashDOT is preparing to move the Second Avenue side of the camp's fence line inward. Spokesperson Ryan Overton says this is meant to visually show the community it's getting closer to decommissioning the camp. Jewel's staff has worked really hard to continually move people, shrink the footprint of the camp. Um, so we're planning to move the fence tentatively scheduled for Monday of next week and it'll come in about 50 feet or so. Everyone agrees there is still much more work to be done, and it even extends beyond the encampment. But progress is better achieved when the key players aren't split on this issue. Now, in that press conference, I also asked Council President Brian Biggs if this gathering today at the homeless encampment meant that the stakeholders are now all on the same page with this issue. He answered me saying that they are working towards being on the same page, almost there, but still a work in progress. Amanda Roldy, Creme 2 News.